All right, today we're at La Cire. This is a restaurant I've watched for almost four decades. When I first came to New York City in 1982, this place was a big deal. It was one of the great, great restaurants in the history of New York City, really part of that dynasty. And the last vestiges of those Le La restaurants, like La Côte Basque, La Grande Nuit, La Caravelle, they are all gone. La Cirque is still here. Cirio Maccione's the man that put this place on the map. Really a self-made guy, a New York restaurant legend. We're gonna meet Cirio, we're gonna meet his son Mauro, the heir apparent, one of them. Uh, the new chef that they have and see what this is all about. How do they keep this place going for 40 plus years, keep it fresh, keep it interesting, keep it busy. I'm Mike Kalameko, chef and food lover. Come with me and meet some of today's most interesting chefs and their crews that work in their kitchens. Real chefs, real restaurants, and real recipes. That's what's on the menu. This is Mike Kalameko's Real Food. Now operating in its fourth decade, the importance of Le Cirque in the context of New York City is hard to underestimate. It was a launching pad for great, great chefs like Alan Sayak and a young Frenchman named Danielle Bouloud. It was considered among the city's best kitchens and best-run dining rooms for decades running, and it was the quintessential New York power scene for most of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And at the helm, presiding over all these demands and egos, was Cirio Maccion an immigrant who arrived years earlier with just a few dollars in his pocket, but apparently pitch-perfect industry DNA. Sirio Maggione, yes, sir. thanks for having us in. No, thank you, and I'm sorry. I think it's one of the first times that I'm late in my life. <laughs> You're forgiven. Last and time I, I try checked. not to, really, I, did, I try not to have a fight. Because when a guy said, you know, Bloomberg <laughs> building is there. I said, no, I, I asked him to come in the courtyard, the Bloomberg building. And he said, no, no, I've been a delivery boy for my life, is there. <laughs> and you ended up on 11th Avenue. You 11th okay? Avenue. That's a different Bloomberg, that's his cousin. <laughs> anyway, we're here, we're here, we're good. Let's talk a bit about the history yes. of this restaurant. I mean, you're, you're one of the last of the great empresarios, going back to the generation of Lutes, yeah, La Côte Basque, La Caravelle. I can tell you that. I also feel that we are at the beginning, you know, next month we open and the uh, Hotel Pierre belong to us. And so now we are taking over, we already have our, our people uh, redecorating and they're going to, they're going to have a, a great chef coming from Italy. And so we try. So as usual, Sirio Maccione is looking uh, forward after 60 years in the business. More, 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 more nervous than ever, but I, I, I don't like people that say don't worry. I worry even when I sleep. People that don't worry, they don't deserve it to be in business. <laughs> Thank you. I don't, feel, I don't feel so alone when I wake up in the middle of the night with oh the brain going. God. And we are doing very well. Our business is well. Here we're doing very well. We have a, a, a very good chef here. Now you've had great, great chefs come through your kitchen. Always. Alan Sayak. Daniel Boulud's Sayak. career was launched. Sayak, for me, is the one that agree with me. I don't say the best. The best do not exist. We had some great people in the kitchen. You had great, well, I mean, Daniel Boulud's like, and a lot of cooks that passed through Michael here. Michael Monaco, right. Bill Telepin, uh, David Boulay, of course, uh, just, you know, to just to name a few. I know, I know. La photo is now? Yes, chef. And you have a new chef? Yes, Olivier. Yeah. Olivier Legend is uh, phenomenal. You know, we uh, really lucked out to have him and Kelly uh, working with us. Uh, they've been here since January. And the menu is now starting to really uh, gain an identity, and uh, you know he's a thoroughly classic French, um, uh, which is you know what, what you do. To. That's what we do, yeah. and he does it very well. And yeah, they, they do it very well. And as we've seen the sort of I don't know, a decline in popularity we have, but you know it's still great to see this, these traditions being. Well, that's what we are, and as my father would say, we're sort of almost a little more haute brasserie, because at the same time that you can have this extravagant, uh, classic. Uh, dish. Uh, um, we also do uh, things from that we had on the menu since 1974. It's difficult to, uh, you know, we, we have a history so we maintain some of the recipes of the past but at the same time obviously incorporating uh, the chef's new dishes and things like that. But you have customers who've been here for years, they come and they want they the come in and they're, and they're like, oh, oh we have frog legs this way right. and they're like, the oversole, thank you. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's the business. That's the business. So this dish, I mean the history of this restaurant, this dish is the Bassin Papillot that's been 
wrapped up in potatoes that Danielle Ballou put on the menu years and years ago, and they can't take it off the menu. It's classic crisp potatoes with a beautiful piece of black bass in the middle served over lake. It's been that way since day one, since Danielle Ballou did this 25, 30 years ago. History. You're going to do a couple of demos for us today. The yes. first one's a classic. Yes, Talk it's to a bit classic. It. We do a, a rack of lamb with a, a parsley crust. We do the stuffed vegetable traditional way. My mom used to do them like that. My grandmother used to do them like that. So that's the way we do them on the sink now. I don't argue with mom and grandma. No, we All don't. Right. <laughs> the first thing we're going to do, I guess, is get the lamb in a pan. Yes, we're going to seal the lamb in a pan. I'm from uh, Martigues. It's in the south of France. It's 20 miles from Marseille. Need to give a good sear to the lamb. And uh, I move along, you know, I work a little bit in the south of France for a while. Uh, places like La Ville, Sainte Croix, uh, Le Rolle Saint Victoire with René Bergest. Places you got Star Michelin. And, uh, so I grew up like this. So all the veg you are represented over here are inside. So you have tomato, you have zucchini, but also salad, arugula, mescla, onions. So all of this is mixed together. Uh, randomly, I work with Alain Ducasse. I work with uh, Daniel Boulou for many years. So it's great progression. Mm -hmm. This job comes up. You brought with you a chef who you had yes. worked with. Yes, we, 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 yeah. Appetizer. Appetizer, lobster salad, and octopus salad, guys, over there. For the third time, come on. And uh, Kelly started with us, she was 19 years old, and uh, she did her own thing. She went to work with Alain Ducasse in Monaco. She went to Paris. You're the first woman chef de cuisine in 38 years in this restaurant. It's been a good ride, what can I say? It's a lot of fun, it's a huge house. I'm really used to this type of style of having a large brigade. And so, like, to me, this is like home. It's second nature. I'm used to working with Chef Olivier for a long time now, and it's just a, it's a real pleasure being able to see a lot of the new cooks coming in, and even now, more and more, there's more women. Unlike when I started, there was just me. Now, you know, maybe 25%, maybe 30% of my team are women, and they're excellent. So the rack of life is nice and sear. There you go. Inside the oven for 12 minutes. We have the lamb sauce running right there, which is the natural lamb juice. Just off the lamb bones. Lamb bones, garlic, water, and we reduce, we reduce, we reduce to obtain what we have right there. Very simple, very, very classic. Very simple, very classic. That'll reduce down further. One of the challenges at Le Cirque is their customers have been coming here forever. Yes. And there's certain parts of the menu that nobody can play with. No, you cannot. Doversole, grillé, doversole meunier, roast chicken. So pasta, there's pasta primavera. Pasta primavera, they're just going to be there. People yeah. come in, they just want it. Some people come in at Le Cirque, they always want to have the same feed. But we know those customers. We know what, what they come from, when they come, what they're going to order. They never change. Perfect, thank you. Thank you so much. And that's great, you know, that's great for people, you know. I understand the customer perspective because I was a private chef for five years. So I understand the perspective of somebody who is eating outside every night. And they come to the circuit and for us it's like a house, you know. It's, for them, you know, it's like, okay, I come to my house, I sit, I have my table, I know what I'm going to order, I know they're going to have it for me, and it's fantastic. Right. All right, the lamb is... So the lamb is seared now. And seared, not cooked. It's not it's... cooked, not completely cooked. So the trick is to take a brush with mustard. Dijon mustard. Yeah, Dijon. No, American. Yeah, Golden's. <laughs> it's really good with hot dogs. <laughs> it's great with anything. So you have the fresh bread crumbs like this right, with the parsley and it's just going to roll it inside so this anybody can do that. It sticks okay. back in so the like oven. So like this back in the oven. I'm going to go back in the oven for at least uh, five minutes huh? just to the vegetable. Uh, they look beautiful. They nice just glaze, yeah. almost comfy down now. I'm going to plate nicely. And this is how it goes out in the dining room? Yes, that's Presented the way. Presented table side. Yes, always. At the Cirque, we do a, a lot of dishes table side. Always on the menu, four or five items who are done table size. Mm -hmm. There's not too much restaurant to do that in New York no. anymore. No, very, very few. Very few. Four so. Seasons, you, I don't know who else. Oh, Daniel. Benoit, Daniel. Daniel, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alain Ducasse does it too. A rack of lamb goes in the middle of the veg, like this. That's the way it goes. Do I do it? No, you do it. Been a long time since I did Russian service or French service or any service. You've done this before. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you saw the training video. <laughs> I, I always keep my there is a how do you call a, a training uh, paper that they give it to us. Yeah, yeah. You review it on the on the subway in every day. And I try my best. 
That's a beautiful plate of food. Okay. This is why people come to Le Cirque for this kind of service, this kind of food. It almost doesn't exist in the city anymore. That's right. It's That's right. Uh, one of the great last bastions of luxury by the old definition. You know, when you come to Le Cirque and they give you a steak knife. <laughs> it's beautiful. Trust left to my own druthers, I would just pick this up and bite it off the bone, but I can't do that on TV, can I? This dish was on the menu in New York and all the great restaurants. This idea of rack of lamb for two with mustard and breadcrumbs goes back. It's classic French cuisine, you know, 50, 100 years. But to me still, this is just phenomenal. Great piece of lamb, perfectly cooked, great jus, perfect vegetables. That's why people come to Le Cirque. This cuisine isn't dead, it's still alive. In, in not too long, but tell us, you have this amazing story. You, you came here as an, as an immigrant and landed a job, I th as starting out at the colony as a, a busboy, as a waiter. You started at the bottom of the colony. I, I was cleaning the, the floor in the kitchen. But the owner was a good man, and very fast one day came to me. Matter of fact, I did something which I think was wrong. And so he came to me, I need to talk to you, say goodbye. I'm fired. He said, you know, starting tomorrow, you'll be in charge of everything. I said, but I'm 23 years old, and I just arrived here. I said, do you want to do I'm with you. He was a very tough man. So I did, and uh, we were very successful. And what year was this, Syria? What year? I arrived here in 56. 56. The but there, when, we, when we opened there, it was a, uh, 70, 71, when we opened the Mayfair. We have been very successful. We open now, we open six restaurants, and I've been right. So the plans are what? I mean, you have this place, which is great. It's, it's a New York destination, it's busy, you're still current, which is remarkable yeah. in this restaurant scene. But We'd like to expand a little more. We, okay. you know, as a, we, you know, uh, it is in the end a business. Uh, we have a, a brand, a bit of, it's a luxury brand. So we have some opportunities in some international cities that we're looking into. Uh, London, Dubai, uh, Rio de Janeiro, Istanbul. So yeah, I think we'd like to uh, open up a few more shops in some of these destinations. I'd, I'd like to do, I'd like to uh, eventually work on some more casual Le Cirque, Bistro, or Brasserie yeah. style concepts uh, to market a little bit. But we have a lot on our, on our plate right now, so we're going to focus in on what we have going now. So I'm sitting here and it's a busy Wednesday, you got a regular lunch service, the maitre d' walks in and he says, okay, really quick, I have somebody coming, it's a big shot. And we need what? What does he need made for in an hour from now? Well, he needs a gazpacho now. Not on the menu? No, not on the menu. So we're going to whip up a gazpacho out of thin yes, air. Yes, yes. And there's some other orders of stuff too, right? Uh, yeah, that happens frequently. It really depends on uh, the guests. We have a lot of people who've been coming for, you know, 20, 30 years. And at this point, you're not going to tell them no. But and they kind of get what they want. Yes, I mean, it's, it's good. Sometimes it's a little stressful because we're not always prepared, but it's a good challenge and it keeps us on our toes. Well, we're going to watch. We're going to try our hardest. <laughs> Two times the Chinois Mousseline. Yes, Get some shiny eyes on top. All right, so here is the Saudi prince who called up and said, I'm coming and I'd like a few things made. Chef, tell me about what we have going on in here. Here we have a fresh cucumber cups with our signature tuna tartare. So this we're gonna is go obvious. With that. So this is foie gras on a little toast. Yeah, between the toast, toast and the foie bread. gras is a mango chutney. Oysters with a little bit of caviar on top. We have a little steak tartare with traditional uh, cornichon, and uh, that'll be it. But that's what makes uh, Le, Le Cirque different from other places, that we do take care of our customers uh, and uh, we cater to them. And uh, if we have somebody we have to do it, we do whatever they want. You know, we're not going to say no this or no that, we do. Yeah, that's, that's how we keep this uh, following for many years. You guys still come out of that great tradition of sort of the classical style restaurant where it really was all about hospitality. Yeah. Front of the house was huge. That's and right. as you said, I mean, you have regular customers that and eat we, here two or three days a week absolutely. and have been for decades. And if they come in and want something that's not on the menu, that is not on the menu. it's on the menu. It, exactly. And that's what makes a difference, I think. You know, there are 10,000 restaurants in New York today, right? right. And good ones. And right. the, so you can go anywhere. But where do you pe people go again and again where they can 
Le rapport, ça vous a plu C'était. Uh... I worked at the uh, first Le Cirque location on 65th and Park for uh, six years, from uh, 1986 to 1991. I was the maître d' there the last three years, and uh, basically, I took a 21 year leave of absence and just came back. <laughs> <laughs> you took a 21 year leave of absence to open up a bunch of successful restaurants. Yes, yes. But how cool for these guys who are looking to expand. I'm very, very happy and, and I, like I, you. I love the opportunity to help them and, and help the growth of this fabulous uh, restaurant and group and institution. It's hard to explain this feeling because uh, they were my family a long time ago and it's almost like, you know, I, I came back and I, I, am, I am again part of this great team and family. It's not just a team, it's a family feeling as well. We have the roasted asparagus, Pan roasted. Parmesan cheese. And then on the side we have some small uh, Oregon morels that are cooked with shallot, soft poached egg that goes that's on top. That's what that is. So, yeah. that's, so, that's so classic. So the egg yolk breaks, it, breaks, it, breaks, it thickens sauce. it up, yeah. Black squid ink uh, calamari ravioli, cockles out of the shell, and olives. The same type of things we have inside. There's basil in the sauce. So much flavor in that plate. We're definitely respecting the boundaries of having it being, you know, south of France and, you know, Italy, both northern and southern. But at the same time, we're trying to bring a little bit like lighter and fresher flavors. We're introducing items such as the Dorad ceviche, which is a really great fish, but at the same time, the preparation is a little bit spicy, something you really wouldn't do in the south of France. So not so big into spicy foods. I think everyone can really appreciate now the grilled octopus salad. Yeah, that was great. You know, the beans was just great. You know, it's a nice mix of the two, and everyone from the Mediterranean can enjoy a dish like that. Octopus. Octopus salad. So, those big octopus right there, uh, we're going to pre-cook them in a cold bouillon. That's a salad of uh, Cesare beans. We do that with calamari and octopus. It's very simple. So the cedar beans have been pre-cooked. Tomato confit and uh, scallions, parsley. This is garlic confit. Ah, so slow garlic confit olive cook, oil. yeah, slow cooking olive oil, so virgin olive oil. Fresh lemon juice, sel de mer, espelette pepper. And again, your sea salt's all from the Camargue. Right. Most, that beautiful region where they... Everything from the Camargue, that's where. Yeah. I live next to that, I'm uh, maybe 10 miles from the Camargue. I live all my life in Camargue, so there we go. Salt. And it's been pre-cooked, so all we're really doing is heating it up at this point? Oh, uh, no, this one needs to be seared. Seared. This one is raw. And, and the squid cooks in two seconds. Wow. Right. Enjoy the squid. Yeah. One, two, three. The squid is, like you say, one, two, three. You have to uh, redo that. Yeah? So here we go with the octopus salad. So we put some beans in the middle like this. What kind of beans are these again? Cesare beans from Italy. Yeah. Again, it's a very simple dish. A little bit of lemon. Un jus de citron. That's a great spring summer dish, huh? It's very nice, yeah. People like it very much. It's very popular right now in the sea. And voila. Let me have the beans first. I'm curious. Those are great. This could be dinner. It's gonna be a double portion of this. Yep. Octopus is great, man. Great, it's very great. great. That's beautiful. While creme brulee can be found on dessert menus anywhere these days, it was the dessert of the moment in the 80s. And here's the backstory. Guess what? It got its start right here at La Cirque. My father and us, we had this amazing dessert. It's a classic uh, you know, Spanish Catalonian dessert, crema catalana. At that point, my father you know, came back in September to New York, and our pastry chef at the time, Dieter Schoner, he said, you know, we, we had this dessert, it's famous. Yeah, I, I know of it and everything. Um, so they prepared it in these little wonderful uh, terrines, a little, little thinner, shorter. They made the crust a little lighter and uh, put it on the menu as 
creme brulee. And after that, little by little, it, it started, you know, you see... It was on every... On, ten years yeah, later, ten it was years on later, every menu between here and San Francisco. So, and it, it became yeah. like one of the desserts of, of that era. Yeah, I could say my father, he, he popularized yeah. the, the creme brulee. So we'd do it two times. It's like giving away the secrets. You have this super dense custard, obviously, if it's nothing but heavy cream and egg yolks, yeah. couldn't get any richer and denser. And it's, it's chilled. You have this top that you just have to kind of crack your way through. And that, that is magic. Super, super crispy top. Mm -hmm. Smells like caramel, because it is. <laughs> this super luxe custard. Enough said? <laughs> That's like the classic. I could have that every night yeah. before I go to bed. This is like like one after of you brush your teeth, like just go down. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares what my teeth look like in five years? They're rotten. One of those by my bed, five or six spoons, and then just sleep like a baby. Tell me about wine, what, what people are ordering. Because I'm always curious. I mean, I come here, I never know what people are drinking. What's on the other tables? I usually let you guys take care of me and tell you I'm not a, I just don't, I'm, I'm an inexpensive guy. Find me the good stuff that's inexpensive. Now, this is a good way to do it because some people, they're afraid of us. So they open the wine list, they look, they look at the price. So, and I, I go to the table, you know, I say, who is going to kill me, the guys? When you have a sommelier, tell him, listen, I don't want to spend a lot of money. My budget is $50. Right. I don't want to go over. Right. But I want to have a fantastic experience. And here's what I like. And, and yeah. then you can always ask, what, what do you that's normally it. drink? And, and like that, so I'm going to do my best to find for you for $50 the best wine I have on my wine list. As with most men of a certain age, Sirio's mind occasionally drifts back to recall the good old days and some of the many, many beautiful women he's met along the way as the owner and maitre d' of the hottest restaurant in the country. Was well, one here this night? That, uh, too, too much. In the, and she knew the problem, but this is the, the game. My wife, beautiful women, there are so many. But when they're beautiful and they know that they're beautiful and they know now I show you who I am, that is dangerous. <laughs> yeah. But looking at the leg of the women last night, I would have given the restaurant and the key and everything. But you cannot do that. You have to treat some and the family to maintain. But maybe, you know what you do at a certain age? You just see, you just do to try if you really are able to still do, <laughs> which is very difficult. <laughs> it's a 12-hour day, man. We've been here since 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, we wanted to catch everything. You know, we'll see if it's a really magical place. And we saw a lot today. Even, like, great lunch and then a, 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 a table of princes that was supposed to be here at 2.15. And then they called we're going to be late, and that became 3.15. I think they arrived at 4.30. We had to feed 20 people in between shifts. Nobody got a break. It was insanity. Dinner was great. It's great to see a new team. It's great to see this restaurant with new energy. Such a part of New York history. I mean, the Maccioni family, Sirio, obviously Mauro, the heir apparent. Um, it's just great to see new blood in this restaurant. It's a great New York restaurant. I'm not cooking on the back end of this show, as you can tell. Chef did a bunch of demos. La Cirque, you know, if you don't want to sign up for the full Monty menu in the dining room, they have this great cafe on the back side with an inexpensive, everybody I've seen to this restaurant that eats on the cafe side. Same food, same kitchen, same quality, at a fraction of the price. Give Le Cirque a try. Really love this place, big part of New York history. See you next week.